chaos. Man. Yeah. He was so, man, I don't know what his problem was. He was just so, I don't know. He just couldn't uh, calm down. He was just, you know, cussing everybody, screaming at everybody, the referees, you know, the people in the back. Just, I don't know. I don't know if it was, you know, his first really solo start on deal. You know, like, I don't know if you know this or not. He, he would like, you know, they'd take him out and do an interview about Sting. And then halfway through it, he's, he's cussing Hogan. You know, it's like, what's going on here? Everybody look at each other and go. And, and I don't know uh, what was his problem in the WWE, why he didn't last there, but I knew he wasn't going to last there either because you're not going to talk to people like that there for very long. When you actually got in the ring with him, did he calm down or was he still, uh, he was you know? just erratic, man. Just nervous as a, I don't know what. I think the pressure was too much for him. Wow. Of course, I don't know if you, no, I'm not saying anything anyone doesn't know. I remember in Gainesville, I think it was Gainesville, um, when they first gave his first singles match against Ric Flair, he bombed terribly. Oh, back in back the, the back in the day. Yeah, okay, you yes. remember about that? Absolutely. Okay, he never shook that. Never shook that, you know, and that's why I still say that Rick was the better of the two. You know, Rick had all the tools, in my opinion, to have been anything he could have wanted to be. He could have been the next Steve Austin because he had credibility. He had uh, he had physical gifts. He could do the you know those awkward things like the thing off the top. You know all those things that a lot of people couldn't do, and it, and he had that word credibility. I think he was the better of the two. It's been documented by everybody involved that. Rick Steiner was actually supposed to go over on Ric Flair at Starcade 88 in under five minutes for the world title in somewhat of a squash. It was Dusty booking at the time, and Flair went above Dusty to uh, Turner or Crockett and got it changed. Um, well, he did that to me, too. Really? I was supposed to have won the belt that night in Chicago at Halloween Havoc against Sting. Right. Uh, but uh, and that was probably my greatest night of wrestling, and I didn't even know the finish. We, what we were told is I was going to win. And how it was going to happen was, we're going to do a match, go to the finish, throw him outside the ring, throw him through the back door, and as he's come back through, he's going, you know, work his deal that someone hit him in the head, walk into the ring, roll him up, one, two, three, I'm the champ, okay? I've been told this now for three months. I did interviews for three months. I was going to be the next champ. Hmm. Rick Flair would come to me and say, "You said you shouldn't be saying that." That's what Oli says I'm going to be, you know. So I'm going to say what Oli tells me to say. And so I know that he was the one that went to the upper. People said, she's not ready for this. So what they did was, they had Barry Wendell come in, roll him up, one, two, three. I got the belt, never was told anything different. I think, okay, I'm the champ, I have a back turn. This huge eruption comes, turn around, stings in the ring, ref's grabbing the belt out of my hand, going, take the stinger splash, one, two, three. I didn't even know that was part of the thing. You know, wow. I, but to me, I got chill bumps talking about that. That to me is more, more fun than have everything laid out. And we fooled everybody. We fooled the boys. And when you fool the boys, and that's what I learned that night, and I do it in some of my matches sometimes, I try to be really physical and really make everybody think I really hate that person while I'm out there. Because I know if you fool the boys, you fool the people. That simple. If Rick would have went over as planned, do you think he would have wound up becoming that big star that you think, think he, he could have been? I think he could have been. If, you know, for instance, if he had the right people in his ear saying, okay, Rick, to be the champ and be the top single guy, you got to give. Mm. And that's, you know, I got in his ear like that a little bit mm -hmm. at the end there. Yeah. And uh, I let him know then that, man, the only reason you haven't gotten to where you should be is because people are scared of you, you know. Yeah.